Hello, guys. Good evening. Thank Good, you evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you guys? How are you? Yes. Good. We are. Good. Excellent. And it's mm -hmm. Friday, right? So um, yeah. we, we just, uh, we're just beginning, you know, the weekend. So I'm glad um, to be here, guys. And I'm sorry again. I do apologize for the inconvenience that inconvenience that we had yesterday with the power, right? So I don't know what happened. Um, but yeah, I don't like to, um, to schedule, you know, the class. Something that you need to know about me is that I, I prefer to have classes from Monday through Thursday and to have uh, the Friday off because most of us, you know, we wait for that day to have, you know, probably dinner with the family or to go out, etc. So believe me that it's very um, hard for me like to reschedule. And I'm sorry that we have to go through this, but I'm here. Así que thank you so much for joining. And well, guys, today is um, March 10th. And this is our session number eight, meaning that we are just in the middle, right? Uh, we're just halfway um, to finish this course. And uh, well, definitely we're going to be resolving some of the exercises that you were mentioning in the in the WhatsApp group. And also we're going to go, you know, section by section in the exam. Plus I'm going to be checking um, some uh, things that I think um, will be good you know, to, to review from the manual sections that probably are not in the, um, uh, in the platform, but that it's good. It's good to know. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to be sharing my screen. So we're going to begin with, uh, uh, with that part about the exercises and I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I can go section by section, right? Oops, I think I moved to section four. Okay, here we have um, 3.0, wait. Um, give me a second. Because for section three, okay, oh, midterm. Okay, the midterm exam. Very good. So we have four different sections. Two of them we have already resolved them, or at least part of it, and we're going to check them in just a moment. But before I'm going to pass the attendance very quickly. So let's begin. Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Here. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you. Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Present. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Um, Francisco Antonio Sanchez Joven. Present. Thank you, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Here. Thank you, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present, teacher. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Maria Susena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ivis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you. Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, Jensi Marlene León López. Present teacher. Thank you. And Zulma Beatriz Pérez Galdames. I'm here. Thank you very much. Okay, so that was... um. um the first 
attendance call and then we're going to have the one at the end no worries so the first part it was a listening um, exercise right and what you had to do it says listen to a conversation between friends then check out or check true or false right so we had to listen to the conversation and don't worry we're going to go section by section vamos a ir un sección por sección uh, okay jose carlos ahorita give me a few seconds jose carlos rodriguez jose carlos rodriguez Vaya, lo puse ahí la asistencia, thank you. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin with this one and then we move, we'll move. We'll move along, okay? So we're going to listen. Let me make sure that we are sharing the sound and I'm going to play it. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. This is part one, okay? So in the first section, right, it says Ryan wanted to go to the party, true or false? Megan met a shy girl at the party, true or false. Carla knows a lot of people that Meg, uh, that, that Megan's friends knows, true or false. Carla works in an office, true or false. And Ryan will join his friend and Carla for lunch. Okay, so a tip, a tip that I gave you, if you remember, is that whenever you go... Uh, or, or you have to um, work on a listening exercise. The very first thing that you have to do is to read all the prompts, to read all the questions or, you know, the, the sequence of the events, right? So this is a tip that will help you to pay attention and to look for details when you are listening to the track, right? So first, the very first thing that, that we know is that this is going to be about, you know, a party, right um and the people involved in the conversation will be ryan megan right uh and carla so we know like some details now that will help us to have a better understanding on the conversation so let's go ahead and take a look let's play it and then we're going to answer listen to a conversation between two friends ryan and megan then check true or false. Hi, Megan. Hey, Ryan. Were you at that huge party last weekend? You mean the one that took up the whole city block? Yeah. I can't believe how many people were there. I know. I didn't want to go, but my friend Doug dragged me along. I didn't see you there. I had a great time, and we met a really cool girl there. My sister and I went to the Natural History Museum with her on Wednesday. What's she like? Well, her name's Carla, and I thought she was pretty shy and reserved at first. But she's not? Nope. Once I started talking to her, I realized she wasn't shy at all, just calm and cool. It just goes to show you that people aren't always what they seem like at first. No kidding. <clears throat> oh, and Carla and I discovered we have a lot of friends in common. Really? I'm surprised you haven't met before. Yeah, me too. So what does she do? She works at home. She runs a business out of her living room. Doing what? She teaches middle school and high school kids how to save money for college. Carla sounds like a strong and independent woman. Yeah, she definitely is. Cool. Hey, we're going for lunch tomorrow afternoon. Do you want to come? Sure, I'd love to meet her. Great. Meet us at that Thai restaurant, you know. The... Okay, very good. So that was the lesson. Now let's go ahead and take a look. So from what you understood, Ryan wanted to go to a party. Is it true or false? Let's listen that first part. Okay, just to clarify. Let's see. Listen to a conversation between two friends, Ryan and Megan. Then check true or false. Hi, Megan. Hey, Ryan. Were you at that huge party last weekend? You mean the one that took up the whole city block? Yeah. I can't believe how many people were there. I know. I didn't want to go, but my friend Doug dragged me along. So... Did he want to go to the party, guys? No, he didn't want. 
Exactly, that's false. Actually, he says that he didn't want and that one of his friends dragged him right to the party. Drag is arrastrar, right? So what about number two? Megan met a shy girl at the party. Is it true or false? At the beginning, she was shy, but, but then... But was she? No, she was Exactly. Wasn't... Exactly. So in this case, Megan met a shy girl at the party. True or false? False. Oh. Exactly. False. Because actually after, you know, meeting her, after talking to her, so she realized she was not. So she actually met a different girl, right? She was very like probably um, uh, outgoing, right? An outgoing girl. So Carla notes a lot of people that Megan's friends, Megan's friend, I'm sorry, notes. Is it true or false? True. It's true. And instead of saying all, you know, those words, all what we can say is Carla and Megan have friends in common, right? Like in Spanish, tenemos amigos en común, we say. So they have friends in common or they have people they know, right? Uh, um in common. So what about this one? Carla works in an office. Is it true or false? False. False. She Where does she work? Ah, okay. And what does she do? Let's see if someone got or grasped that information. Uh, with kids and high school students. Okay. Very good. She works uh, teaching, you know, kids. And, and what does she teach? Do you remember, guys? No. No? I think... No, I don't remember. You don't remember. No worries. Let's go ahead and listen to that part, okay? Oh, um, yeah. This thing, I have to reload it if you want to listen to it again. Listen to a calm... Just calm and cool. It just goes to show you that people aren't always what they seem like at first. No kidding. Oh, and Carla and I discovered we have a lot of friends in common. Really? I'm surprised you haven't met before. Yeah, me too. So what does she do? She works at home. She runs a business out of her living room. Doing what? She teaches middle school and high school kids how to save money for college. So that's what she, that's what she does, right? She runs a business from her living room and actually what she does is that she offers courses I mean to middle school kids and high school kids on how to save money for college well <laughs> kind of sad because actually it would be wonderful to teach you know kids and young people to be independent right like to run a business on their own not to save money for college but actually that's something cool that at least you can you have an idea if you want to study right on how to save money or how to organize your finances right Okay, very good. So what about number five? Ryan will join his friend and Carla for lunch. True or false? True. It's okay. true, right? He says that he wants to meet her as well. Okay, and had it happened to you before, guys? Have you ever um, met someone and it turns out that you have friends in common? Have Had it happened to you before? Well, because actually it happened to me, right? And and I remember um, when I, something that it's very, you know, it's kind of a curiosity to me. It's like uh, my husband and I, we studied, uh, you know, uh, in the same university, we studied the same major, um, we visited the same places. Uh, we, can, we, we can tell that we were at the same place, same, you know, time, same activities, um, and we met until after we graduated, um, until we were just working as teachers, right? So it was kind of, you know, um, <laughs> funny because actually we never, you know, met and we have a lot of friends in common, but we never met, you know, at the university. So it kind of reminds me of my story. So what about part number two, okay? It says, um, listen to the conversation between two classmates, okay? So let's take a look at the details. Okay, don't forget the details, right? First, we read, we take a look at the sequence, details, people, and then we listen, okay? So number one, it says, Mike had 
plans to meet Kelly? After class or at the class or during the class, right? Anna thinks Kelly got sick or doesn't think Kelly got sick? Anna thinks Professor Atkins knew Kelly missed the exam or didn't know that Kelly missed the exam. And number four, Professor Atkins usually allows makeup test and doesn't allow makeup test. Do you know what a makeup test is, guys? No, 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 well, in Spanish, we call them um, examens de reposición, creo que se llama, right? So a makeup test, it's kind of uh, a examen de recuperación, right? Uh, it's whenever you failed, you know, an important exam, but they give you a second chance, right? They give you a second chance so you can go ahead and get a better grade and pass this object, right? So that's an, a makeup test, okay? So let's go ahead and listen to the conversation. Give me a moment and I'm going to play it right now. Take, take notes, remember, take notes of the names and the details, etc. So I'm going to play it right now. Passages, third edition, level one, unit two quiz, part A. Listen to a conversation between two classmates Mike and Anna. Then check the correct answers. Anna, what did you think of the English final? I don't know, Mike. I thought it was pretty hard. Yeah, I thought so too. But I feel pretty good about it. Hey, do you know what happened to Kelly? She didn't show up for the exam. I don't know. But we were supposed to meet right after class to talk about our final project. Do you think she's sick? Hmm. I just talked to her last night and she seemed okay. I doubt she got sick so quickly. Well, I should have said something to Professor Atkins. I wonder if she noticed that Kelly wasn't there. Probably not. There are 55 people in our class. But Kelly never misses class. Do you think Professor Atkins will let her take a makeup exam? Yeah, she let me take a makeup exam once. I suspect she'll do the same for Kelly. I hope so. Let's call Kelly now and see if she's okay. Okay, very good. So question one, Ma Mike had plans to meet Kelly after class or at class, guys? After, after class. After mm -hmm. class. Very good. And Anna, what? Anna? I think Kelly got sick. Doesn't think, doesn't think, doesn't think Kelly got sick. sick. Exactly, why? Why she doesn't think that she's sick? Do you remember that detail? Anyone? Passages, third edition. Ah, well, we... I escuché la respuesta. Say it again. She talked to her before. Exactly. She talked to her and the previous said, night. Right? And she said she cannot got too, too fast. Exactly, and she got, she she thinks it's kind of suspicious, right? She couldn't get sick so fast, as you said before. Exactly. Anna thinks Professor Atkins knew or didn't Doesn't know? know. Kelly means it's a... Didn't know. Okay. Very good. How many students are there in the class? Do you remember, guys? 15, no. It was, it's a lot more. Four. Anyone? Let's see. We were supposed to meet right after class to talk about our final project. Do you think she's sick? Hmm. I just talked to her last night and she seemed okay. I doubt she got sick so quickly. Well, I should have said something to Professor Atkins. I wonder if she noticed that Kelly wasn't there. Probably not. There are 55 people in our class. 55. 55, right? So those are a lot of students. So it will be very difficult for a uh, teacher or professor in this case, right? To uh, real, I mean, to notice if someone's missing. Professor Atkins usually allows makeup test or doesn't allow makeup test? Allowed makeup test. Why? Why do you say that, guys? Or why does 
the girls say that? Because the professor did this before. Uh huh. Exactly. Actually, it's a it's a woman, right? And she says that um she had she missed right one of one exam previously and. She was allowed by Mrs. Atkins or Professor Atkins to make uh, to uh, take the makeup test, right? So, Professor, guys, Professor, the word Professor in Spanish means catedrático, okay? So, so cuando hablamos de un catedrático en una universidad, that is that person is called a professor, okay? Professor. So, uh -huh, teacher would be you know um, a school teacher, right? Um, but whenever we have a different, you know, subject, um, in this case, in a rank, in a higher rank, like in college or in the university, so we call them professor and then the last name of the person, right? So um, let me see. We're going to send our answers and voila. We got all the answers correct. Así que, good job, guys, if you did it like this. If you haven't, well, you are doing the, um, I mean, the exam with me and that's cool. So questions so far, guys, with the listening section? Questions? Check yours. I mean, if you haven't done the, 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 the midterm test, do it right now with me. No problem. We can resolve it together, okay? And remember, you can open you know, different windows. And uh, also, if you want to have two, don't forget that all what you have to do is this. Toma una pestañita y si quiere tener dos a la par, la pega acá en la, en la esquina y luego escoge con cuál la va a emparejar, right? Entonces puede estar acá con su sesión de Zoom y acá puede tener el, el midterm exam, right? And we can complete it together, okay? So we're going to close this one because I don't need it right now. And we're going to move on. So let's move to the second section. Esta ya la hicimos, así que um, we're going to just, ah, no, solo hicimos el, la, la que me habían preguntado. Aquí está. Okay, very good. No worries. We're going to uh, complete it together. Uh, give me a second. One moment. Bye. Okay, so it says, choose the words. It says, instructions. Type the verb that best completes each sentence, right? Use infinitive or gerunds. Do not need uh, to use capital letters or periods, just uh, um, the word, okay? So in this case, um, the first one, right, we're going to be working only with um, either a, a, a gerund or an infinitive, okay? So, Marina, a boy's, what would be the, uh, the, the, the verb form that we need in this uh, answer, guys? Getting. Okay, very good. How do you spell getting? G E double T I N G. Very good. Get in, right? So it's G E T T I N G. And don't forget that it's because of a reason. ¿Qué tipo de verbo tenemos aquí con get? Vamos a ver quién recuerda. ¿Y cómo se llamaban a esos verbos? Es a, a consonant, vowel consonant. Mm -hmm. That's right. And just and there's just one syllable. Exactly. That's correct. Uh, generally, guys, we call these verbs one syllable verbs. Okay. O sea, en español, verbos monosílabos, right? Also, as uh, as Jose was saying, we use the formula CVC, right? Consonant by will consonant. And we know that that is going to be a one syllable verb. Good job. Okay. Now let's continue. Get in. What about this one? David insists on make or to make, making or to make. I'm sorry. What do you think? Making or to make? Oh, making. Maybe to make? Ah, okay. Oh Two different answers. <laughs> okay, but let's see. What is on, guys? Preposition. It's a preposition. And we said that whenever we're talking about a preposition or whenever we need a verb after preposition, we need a? 
ing. Exactly. So, nos quedaría making. Very good. David insists on making a big deal out of his birthday every year. Hmm. Los que le gusta hacer drama porque no, no se lo celebraron, no fueron de donde él la persona quería, o simple y sencillamente um, didn't get what they wanted, right? What about number three? Yeah. I don't care, but I enjoy. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear the answer. Going. Going, right? So in this case, the verb enjoy is always with um with a gerund right after it, right? Well, hate, um, fíjense, les comento, hate es uno de los verbos que dijimos que se puede con gerund or con infinitive, pero en la plataforma solo, solo toma to listen, a pesar de que puede ir con ambas, puede ser to listen or listening. Las dos opciones estarían correctas. But I don't know. In this case, they have only one option and it's to listen. What about number five, guys? Kevin has a job, but he lie, but still he likes what do you think? He likes volunteering. Okay, very good. Volunteering. Excellent. He likes volunteering. Now in this case, same here. Lo mismo sucede con este, con este verbo. Like puede usarse con gerund o con infinitive. Pero en la plataforma, la única respuesta que toma es con infinitive. Okay, volunteering. Mm -hmm. Then, I don't like loud music, but I don't mind. Mm -hmm. I don't mind what? Singing. Okay, Sing. how do you spell that? S E E mm -hmm. I N G Correct, right? This is the right or the correct way to add I N G to the verb C, right? So we are going to add I N G. Now this is uh an exception, right? Because generally we know that all the verbs ending in E we delete or cross out or drop the letter E and add I N G, like in dance. Dancing, right, writing, but the verb C is different, right? Why? Because they have two do, two E's together, you know, right next to the uh, next to each other, and we cannot delete one. So that's going to be C in, right? Excellent. Let's move on. Part two. Okay. Instructions. Type in only the modules that best completes each sentence. Choose between should could, must, might. Mind puede ser negative or affirmative. Do not use capital letters or there's no need to use capital letters or periods. Okay, so we have should, could, must, might, and might it says in the negative or affirmative form. Okay, <clears throat> now let's go ahead and take a look at the, at the first one. Young was late. She blank space, have been stuck in traffic. So, what's your perception, guys? Por supuesto, desde ya les digo, probablemente para ustedes sea uno, para mí también, puede que esté correcto, pero la plataforma tiene una respuesta. Let's see if we can find it, okay? So, Jean was late. She... What must. Do you... Okay, very good. She must. Now, obviously, if I'm using must, it's because I am very, very sure that that's the reason why she was late, because she was stuck in traffic, right? What about number two? Jack didn't call me back. He might. Might. Very good. Excellent. He might have been busy. But obviously here we can also use the the, the, the second option that is may. Pero may por eso no está incluido para no causar como ese... Respuesta ambigua. So number three, I didn't do well on the exam. Y ese la habíamos resuelto. I shouldn't have gone out the night before, right? What about number four? That loud noise. Cool. 
repeat it. Cool. Excellent. Cool. Could have been a falling, I mean, a, a tree falling or a falling tree. <clears throat> and that's totally right because we're talking about possibility, <clears throat> meaning that that's a possible, that's possible, I mean, meaning that that's what ha what possible happened the night before. Then uh, instead of shouting online, I... Sure. <laughs> That's totally right, okay? Uh, I should have been cleaning my apartment. Very good, right? So that's sometimes we we um, put aside what we have to do uh, for what we, you know, uh, want. And yeah, actually, I should have been cleaning my apartment. Right? Then what about number six? That intersection is dangerous. Drivers... Must. must must very good must be more careful let's go ahead and send them this is sending okay look all our answers are correct así que good job guys if you answer those questions i mean those um that information because actually you got all the all of them right so, questions, preguntas en esta sección? Questions? El siguiente creo que ya lo resolvimos, ok? Ah, pa, pero veamos acá. Um, and the ones that you sent me. Eh, me dice acá, Eliu, it's letter B. Ese era, ¿verdad, Eliud? Um, el no. final exam. Ese es el final exam, ¿verdad? Uh, also, section four the, of the final test, uh, letter C. Entonces, en el final exam es letter B y letter C, ¿verdad? Letter C para Marce y letter B dice Eliu. ¿Es correcto? Sí. Yeah. Vaya, yeah. perfecto. Y también part one, letter B, así, ah, ajá, dice Beatriz, va. Very good. Entonces nos movemos acá, solo les muestro y terminamos y luego pasamos al final exam. No worries. <clears throat> then here, guys, um, pretty much what we needed to put into practice was uh, a word, right? The verbs about problems, right? Aggravate, cause, deal with, identify, ignore, run into, right? So we have um, to go ahead and set the verb and also we needed to type it in the third person singular, right? So ignore, ignores, identify, identifies, run into, runs into, deal with, deals with, cause, causes, aggravate, aggravates, right? And then for the second part, we needed to choose the best word that, you know, was the best fit to complete the sentence, right? Um, and we have here those the uh, phrases know for a fact, meaning that um, that's uh, true information. Doubt, verdad? You can use that verb. Mm, lo dudo. I doubt, right? Como en el listening que escucharon dice ella, I doubt um, she got sick. I mean, I doubt. I, uh, something like that. I doubt she got sick very quickly, right? Uh, kind of mm, suspicious, right? Then certain, not sure, suspect, right? I'm positive, assume, doubt me, I am positive, fear, etc. Have a hunch. This is all of those phrases where, you know, um, in the manual and also where I think in one of the videos that the instructor um, explained. So do you have questions about the vocabulary words from here? When when you say I'm positive, es, eh, estoy segura. Um, go figure, ¿verdad? ¿Quién sabe? Por ejemplo, cuando usted quiere decir, ay, ¿quién sabe? This is, uh, you can use this phrase, go figure. Go figure, um assume right that's also another thing that we do um 
one of our, our biggest, you know, uh, problems as human beings, right? We assume so many things and we jump into conclusions, right? So assume is similar to jump, oops, jumped into conclusions. Quiere decir que uno solo, ¿verdad? Se va de un solo, saca sus conclusiones. Don't jump into conclusions, right? They say. Okay, so that's a very piece, a very good piece of advice. Uh, questions, guys, about the vocabulary? No? Okay. Um, I'm going to move to the next one and we go to section D of the midterm exam, which is a reading, right? It says read the sentences, choose from the following words. Uh, that best describes each person. Type them in lowercase, ¿verdad? Todo en minúsculas. Periods are not needed. So you don't have to add periods, right? So for, we have the first example, friendly and outgoing, strong and independent, neat and tidy, uh, wild, crazy, blah, blah, blah. Then we have also here the, uh, the first sentence, right? So give me a sec. <clears throat> The first sentence says, Judy loves going to clubs and staying out late. <clears throat> so in that case, right, what do you think would be the um, the adjective, right, that we need here? Anyone? <clears throat> so there you have all the answers. Tenemos... Hola? Sorry? And the first sentence is will and Christ. Wild, wild and crazy, right? I mean, wild, it's kind of, obviously, <laughs> there is a uh, translation for wild as salvaje, right? But actually, it's not probably like uh, the exact, you know, translation that we would give to this one. Actually, um, let me see if I can find a better translation, right? But while increasing is a good combination. Hmm? Well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's a while terrible increaser. person. Uh -huh. It says, look, this is the definition that I found. If you describe someone or their behavior as wild, you mean that they behave in a very uncontrolled way. So, so that's a person that can be difficult to control, right? If they're happy, they'll show it. If uh, they are angry, they'll go ahead and, you know, show it, etc. When angry or excited, however, he could be wild, profane and terrifying, profane and terrifying, right? So, yeah, lo que se transforma, right? <clears throat> so that's wild and crazy. What a combination, yes. Tom always introduces himself to new students and invites them for coffee. So in this case, he is... <clears throat> Friendly and Very good. Friendly and outgoing. Okay. Friendly and outgoing. What about number three? Mia puts her clothes and books away every night before bed. So she is? Neat and tidy. Mm -hmm. Neat and tidy. Very good. So neat and tidy. Bien asiadito, decimos nosotros. Eh, then number four, Ellis is never afraid to make decisions without asking others what they think. So she is... Oh, uh, independent. Very good, strong and independent. Excellent. Ellis is never afraid to make decisions without asking others what they think. So she's strong and independent. Very good. Then we have the reading. It's you have to read about Jessica's blogs, blog. I'm sorry, and then you have to choose the words that best complete the sentences, right? So for this one, I won't go into detail. I will prefer to move to um, the final exam. Okay, and if we have time, so we can go back to this last exercise. But let me go here to the final exam. Give me a second. Final test.
Okay, so it's B and C, right? Give me a moment. B and C. Bye. Okay, very good. So it says combined <laughs> sentences, right? A combined sentences using defining and non-defining relative clauses. Remember to use capital letters and periods, right? So hmm, let's go ahead and see. Okay, so we have Bulgaria is a small country. Bulgaria is cheap to travel in by bus. So here we have the the, the country, right? And we are, you know, um, we have repetition. So let's go ahead and join these um, two clauses, right? And let's see if one is defining or if it's not defining. So what about number one? Any volunteer to let me know how would you put it together? I think it's Bulgaria, which is a small country, is cheap to travel in by bus. Mm -hmm. Let me see. So this is what you told me. Bulgaria, which is a small country. Uh-huh. Is she to travel by? See, I cannot see. <laughs> to travel by bus. Okay. No puede ver, de verdad, no se ve. No se ve. In la... my case, no. No, but it's because you you have opened the, the notepad. Ah, oh. Yeah. Totally right. <laughs> Sorry, you're totally right. Oh, I see. Okay, very good. Now, uh, in this case, um. I mean, now that you said it this way, right, you are not using commas, which is okay, because actually we have a um, defined and relative clause, meaning that we are giving inf important information right about it. So in this case, the answer that the um, platform gives is the following. Bulgaria, okay, is a small country that is cheap to travel in by bus. That would be the answer, okay? Bulgaria is a small country that is cheap to travel in by bus. However, the sentence uh, you just told me, I think it's okay. Probably uh, the what I would change is the, as a which, verdad? But other than that, it was a very good try. Bulgaria is a small country that is cheap to travel in by bus. Ahí les compartí la respuesta en el chat. What about number two? Florence is easy to navigate on foot. Florence is a small city. So how, how would you put these two together? Very similar. Uh -huh. También está la opción, vaya, esta que, me, que, que tenía acá, por ejemplo, si yo ocupo la opción que me dio José, lo dejaría así, miren, Bulgaria, comma, which, which is a small country, comma, y aquí le quitaría ese da, is cheap to travel in by bus. O sea, para mí esas dos opciones estarían bien, pero recuerden chicos, recuerden que aquí lo importante es si para ustedes es importante o no la información extra que está dando, porque si usted se fija tenemos la misma, la misma información, pero en una es una defining y en la segunda es una non defining, ¿por qué? Porque simple y sencillamente en la primera oración para mí es importante que la persona sepa que es un small country y en la otra es como it's just something, you know, uh, unimportant. I mean, I can remove it. Bulgaria is cheap to travel in by bus. And that's it. So I'm giving extra details. Pero la que pide el, el, la, la plataforma es la primera. ¿De acuerdo? Ahora, hagamos lo mismo con la de Flor Florence. Con esa okay, de Florencia. Ajá. Florence is a small country that is easy to navigate on foot. Okay, I agree with that one. Florence is a small country that is easy to navigate on, on navigate on foot, right? Okay, 
Very good. Esta es una de las opciones que presta la plata, que da la plataforma. De acuerdo. Así tal cual usted lo ha dicho. ¿Cuál sería la otra opción? Como lo vimos allí en la anterior. En esta, en Bulgaria. Usando which. Uh. Florence, uh -huh. coma, uh -huh. which is a small city, uh -huh. coma, no, y, sí, ahí está bien. Uh -huh. coma, it's easy to navigate on foot. Correct, that's it, right? And the two options are valid. Las dos opciones están válidas. En cambio, en la anterior, solo esta es la que, la que toma la plataforma. Solo la primera. Bulgaria, Bulgaria is a small country that is shipped to travel in by bus. Solamente esa. Le voy a compartir estas dos, que son de las primeras. Aunque ya las había compartido la, la, una de ellas. This is number two. Okay. And what about the next? Dígame. Uh, small is... Uh, oh, yes. No. Thank you. It's misspelled, right? Cuando, dec cuando queremos decir eso, decimos the word is misspelled. Misspelled. Wait. Pero una laguna mental. It has to be. Mm -hmm. sí. Misspelled, pues sí. Misspelled, así. The word is misspelled. ¿Verdad? Está mal escrita o hay un error en lo que en la del de, 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 de. Misspelled. Then let's continue with the other one. Dice, my hometown is a popular tourist destination. My hometown gets crowd, right? Or crowded in summer. So how would we put these two sentences together? How can we combine them? En esta, la plataforma da two options. Okay, so which one do you think will be the, uh, the one that you can... No, how would you combine the two sentences, I would ask? My hometown, mm -hmm. comma, mm -hmm. which is a popular tourist destination, uh -huh. comma, yep. gets crowded in summer. Correct. Exactly. That's the first one. My hometown, right? my hometown, which is a popular tourist destination, oops, which is a popular tourist destination, gets crowded in summer, right? Good job. Now, what about a second option? What if we combine the sentence, pero esta vez, en vez de dejar gets crowded in the summer, como main thing, lo ponemos como algo additional. Uh, my, my hometown is a popular tourist destination that gets crowded in summer. Mm, I like that. Esa no está aquí en la plataforma, pero yo siento que está, está, está correcta. Vaya. Me dijo my hometown. It's a popular tourist destination that gets crowded in summer. Mm -hmm. Tourist destination that gets crowded in summer. Muy bien. Pero esa es esa, esa, esa correcta, solo que no está incluida en las opciones de la plataforma. Pero hay una más, right? ¿Cómo nos quedaría si en vez de dejar esto como algo extra, se, que sea lo principal? Que no me quede entre comas. So will be the, another option. No one? No worries. I'll give it to you. 
My hometown, which comma, verdad? My hometown, comma, which gets crowded in the summer, comma, is a popular tourist destination. Recordemos que aquí depende de qué es lo que usted quiere transmitir. Entonces aquí tenemos tres oraciones que están correctas y que en la primera, pues para mí lo importante es que my hometown gets crowded in the summer, pero para mí en la segunda oración lo que es importante es que my hometown is a popular tourist destination y en la número tres en la que simple y sencillamente estoy pues expresando una idea completa, ambas cosas son importantes para mí. ¿verdad? Entonces, de las tres opciones que tenemos en pantalla, solo las primeras dos son de las que podemos usar en la plataforma. La tercera, pues no. De acuerdo. So, let's continue with number four. We have Istanbul has great shopping. Istanbul is the home of the Grand Bazaar. Algún día iré. <laughs> okay, so, how can we combine these two classes? Istanbul, which is the home on the Grand Bazaar, has great shopping. Mm -hmm. That's one of the options. Very good. I'm going to copy and paste it here. That's correct. So what would be the, the other one? Ahora pongamos como información principal a home of the Grand Bazaar. No, no worries. Just se las muestro acá. Istanbul, which has great shopping. I mean, Istanbul, comma, which has great shopping, comma, is the home of the Grand Bazaar. Okay? So in that case, the most important information for me in sentence one is that Istanbul has great shopping. But in number two is that Istanbul is the home of the Grand Bazaar. Okay? So it would depend on what you want to express. I'm going to... Paste it in the uh, chat. Okay, excellent. And, <laughs> pero no las he pegado aquí, ¿verdad? Oh. Give me a second. Se las he ido compartiendo a ustedes, pero no las he ido pegando acá. <clears throat> This is number one. This is number two, number three, we're going to use this one, number four, this one. Okay, so let's move on to part two, right? Instructions. Read the sentences, choose the correct order of modifiers. So in this case, pretty much what we what we are doing is just placing the adjectives in order. Remember, osascom. Osascom, that's the order, right? Let's go ahead and take a look in here. I enjoy vacationing in what? In a lovely coastal town. Very good. In a lovely coastal town, right? So in this case, lovely, as soon as I see the first, you know, adjective, I know that that is opinion, right? So, and I know that the first category that I have in Osascom is opinion. What about number two? Must. Teacher, sorry. What is coastal? Coastal. I think that is near the shore. <clears throat> like um, kind of uh, near to the beach, right? Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Let me see if I can show you an image. <laughs> Una costilla me salió. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, look. This is coastal. This is the coast, right? It's very close to the to the to the um what sea or yeah the sea right 
or the ocean. That is the coast. Mm -hmm. Very good. What about the second part, guys? Let's see here. Uh, number two. Most, how would you organize those adjectives? Big cities with a skyscraper. A skyscraper. Skyscrapers, skyscrapers, uh huh. So big cities, right? With skyscrapers, very good. So big cities. We have in this case only one adjective, size, and then the noun. I like to retire in a quiet mountain village. Exactly right. Quiet, quiet. I'm sorry, mountain village. Very good. What about number four? It says, I've always loved little college towns. Little college towns, right? What about number five? When I travel, I try to avoid visiting expensive places. Expensive places, right? Very good, because first we have the adjective and then we have the noun. So let's go ahead and send our answers and voila. As you can see, all the answers are correct. Okay, questions here, guys? Preguntas? Any questions? No, okay. Let's move on to letter C. Right, so from C, if I am not mistaken, you want you to know the first one, right? Number one, it says, read the instructions and complete the sentences with the following words. Just add the words in, no need of cap for capital letters or periods, right? So in this case, we have those adjectives that we were reviewing, right, uh, this week. It says, uh, my city has great blah, 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 you can buy anything you want. So if I'm talking about buying things, I'm talking about? Shopping. Shopping, very good, excellent, shopping. So the blah, blah, blah is found. There are lots of clubs and shows. Nightlife. Mm -hmm. Nightlife. All year round, there is a comfortable, a comfortable, Climate. Mm -hmm. That's right. Climate, right? Number four, if you have a dog, you need to live in a city that has lots of green spaces. Green spaces, right? Um, it's too expensive for me to live in a place that has a height. Cost of cleaning cost of living, right? It's easier to get around in a city that has an efficient transportation system. That's correct. Esa sería la respuesta correcta, pero lo que sucede es que la plataforma solo acepta como respuesta system. Okay? Ese es el, el, el único inconveniente, right? Why, eh, why, why teacher? Porque es solo systems. Así le grabaron la respuesta, lamentablemente. Tendría que reportarlo yo. Uh -huh. Ah, porque la directriz es en el encabezado. Está correcto. Sí, está correcto. Ajá. Correcto, ajá. Sí, por eso le decía, uh -huh. la respuesta correcta es transportation system. Pero en la plataforma solo le va a aceptar el system. I don't know why. Así le, como que le grabaron la respuesta. Uh -huh. Pero lo voy okay. a, uh -huh, lo voy a reportar. Eh, number six dice... Que era, era esa, ¿verdad, eh, Marce? Ajá, esa. Yeah, era. yeah, yeah, what's that? Sí, oh, que okay. extrañan. I know. No, pero no se preocupen, yo lo voy a, lo voy a reportar. Pero sí, miren, ahí está, ¿ven? We have all the right answers, ¿ok? And voy a reportar esta del sistema ahorita. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Vaya, chicos, ¿alguna otra pregunta con respecto a lo que acabamos de ver? Okay, so I'm going to stop here and I'm going to pass the attendance. And with that, we will be completing, you know, those sections with questions. So let's see, Alba Adir Portal Diaz. Present. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. 
Thank you. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquilla. Present. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Eh, Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present teacher. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. Present. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Okay. Uh, Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present, teacher. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present. Thank you. María Susena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ibis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Melendez Morales. Okay. Um, Rodrigo Daniel Melendez Mayen. Rosa María de Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, eh, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present teacher. Thank you, Jensi Marlene León López. Present teacher. Thank you, and Zulma Beatriz Perez Galdames. Present. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, so I'm going to stop here. And thank you very much for joining. We're going to be meeting next week, right? And I wish you a wonderful weekend. And let's meet on Monday. Bye bye, guys. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you, Monday, guys. Bye bye.